The next speaker, as I talked about earlier, um, is a gentleman by the name of Scott Sullivan. He's going to come up and talk to us a little bit about the different financial methods and how do you compete and build cloud-like infrastructures to support what's happening in the public cloud, but get that same type of cost structure internally. And what, are, what, what we have done as an organization to support that journey. We identified an opportunity roughly about 18 months ago uh, that there, there, is a, there is a market here in which we can help our customers because it's a massive challenge that we're all experiencing every day. And we're fortunate enough to have the opportunity for Scott to join our company. And for some of the folks in the room, you may have had an opportunity to already sit down and talk to Scott about some of the things that are going on and some of the things we can do. Um, for others who may not have had an opportunity, uh, Scott does travel. He's a frequent flyer mile, and he's more than happy to, and he goes to each geo. And we will be more than happy to make sure that you have that opportunity to sit down one on one with him. But please join me in welcoming Scott Sullivan. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So it certainly is an honor to be here with all of you guys today. I, I hope that you're enjoying your time at the Real Cloud Summit. Uh, I got to tell you, it's my first Real Cloud Summit, and what an event uh, this is. And I truly hope you're enjoying your time in Newport Beach, California. And I want to thank Eric as well. I mean, uh, you've done a great job, I thought, of keeping us engaged and, of course, uh, entertained, too. So thank you. So uh, several weeks ago, Richard Hurd said, hey, Scott, I think it'd be a great idea if you came and you spoke to our clients and our vendor partners at Real Cloud Summit. And I said, uh, OK, great. And I have to admit, it was a little intimidating at the time, because here I am to talk to a bunch of system engineers from our own company, as well as uh, our vendor partners. And I'm also talking to IT leaders from valued customers from across the country. I'm like, what? How am I going to uh, keep these guys interested? I'm really not talking about cutting edge technology. I'm not talking about really public cloud or private cloud. So it was a little bit of daunting, but I got my mind wrapped around and I said, that's OK, I can handle this. So then I get here to Real Cloud and I look at the speaking slots. And I say, OK, cool, Friday morning, I get it. Everyone's going to be loosened up. And we're coming to the end of the show, and I look speaking behind me, and I see Steve Garvey. And I'm like, okay, so you got to understand, I am a lifelong Dodger fan. I bled Dodger blue growing up, and Steve Garvey was my favorite player. And I don't know if he's in here right now, but I was, I was nervous to talk to Steve Garvey last night at the beach. So if I put this into a baseball analogy, I'm kind of leadoff hitter for Garvey today, and my objective is to just not strike out with you guys. I want to leave men on the base so that Garvey can bring us all home a little bit later. Um, but let me just talk about what, uh, what we're going to review today. So uh, as Rob talked about, uh, Red 8 Capital is a new initiative uh, that Red 8 has, has recently launched. What I, I have the, uh, the uh, honor to lead that organization for Red 8. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about who Red 8 is. We're going to talk about really how we bring value and what really what makes us relevant, not only to our own, our own team, but also to our clients as well. So that will uh, we'll pivot into our, our, our purpose and why we're here. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the impacts we make on your organization and the various products that we can take to market to help your organization succeed. Now, before I jump into that, I just uh, you know, want to touch on two things. Uh, and, and I like to hit on this because it doesn't matter really what you're buying. Whatever technology solution you're buying, whether it's hardware, whether it's software, whether it's services, do you use private cloud, hybrid, public cloud? Whatever it is, there's one decision that has to be made at every time you're making an IT acquisition. And anyone want to take a stab at what that, that question that you have to answer is? How are you going to pay for it? That's all right. We'll let him. He's the boss, right? Yeah, how are you going to pay for it? No matter what technology solution you're acquiring, you have to figure out how best to pay for the solution. What makes most sense for your organization? And many of the established leading technology companies across our industry figured that out a long time ago. If you look at all the leaders, you look at HP, you look at NetApp, EMC, Cisco, Dell, Microsoft, you go down the list. The one thing every single one of them has in common is they've all got a captive finance program in place to help their clients 
acquire their technology. As deal sizes got bigger, as deals got more complex, clients needed a way to pay for it. And that's exactly what we got with Red 8 Capital. That's why we made the investment in Red 8 Capital. So simply put, when you look at who Red 8 Capital is, we are the financial services arm of Red 8. Can't state it really much more simply than that. And if you look at what our objective is, is we offer client-focused financial solution to help our customers acquire the technology that they need. And we do that by leveraging our sister organization's capabilities. I know many of you are very familiar with the capabilities of, or the, the breadth of Insight Investments. Well, our sister organization is a firm called Insight Financial Services. Uh, before I joined the firm, Insight had been a client of mine for nearly eight years, and I can tell you from a technology financing standpoint, in terms of the ability to manage an IT refresh and an IT leasing program, there is no better independent finance, technology finance company in the industry than Insight Financial Services. So the beauty of being part of Red A Capital is we have the ability to leverage the capabilities of a 30-year-old financial services organization to help you guys manage your IT refresh strategy. So when you look at this, I say, okay, that's great. How are we really relevant? And I got a few data points up here I like to touch on to talk about relevancy with respect to what I do every day. And my first two data points are really more uh, from a VARS perspective, and my last two data points are two that I pull that are more from a client perspective. So the first one I put up here, and, I, and we had, I don't know if IDC is still here, but we had IDC here earlier in the week. And a few years back, IDC conducted a survey, and I think it was among 1,400 users and buyers of technology. So IT leaders like yourself, as well as finance managers and CFOs. And when they surveyed those users, 70% of the users surveyed said that the availability of financing impacts who they buy from. So that's a big reason why Red 8 Capital and all the other manufacturers in our industry have decided to form captives, to provide solutions for how you're going to pay for the technology. In another survey conducted by IDC, and this one was sponsored years ago by SAP, they found that 92% of all purchasing decisions regarding IT may, are made by or involve finance. So I'm sure most of you can appreciate that if you're looking at an IT solution. At some point in time, you've got to talk to the finance folks to figure out how you're going to pay for the solution. What terms might be available? Is there leasing options, financing options, et cetera? For the IT folks in the room, I like these next two. Uh, uh, when you look at uh, Wipro did, this, uh, did the survey, and they said, and you would appreciate this much more than I would, that 40 to 60% of the total cost of ownership or in years, I'm sorry, in years four and five of the use of uh, networking or storage equipment, that the total cost of ownership in years four and five is 40 to 60% of the original acquisition price. I uh, think it, uh, it was Art yesterday who, who made the comment, and I wrote it down, and I don't have it verbatim, but he said he spends 80% of his time worrying about assets that he's in had in place for three, four, and five years. That blew me away. Here's this guy with this big organization, Disney, who's worrying about old technology in his data center. And that validates that statement. And I would say the next point of it is, as you guys know, that the longer the hardware is in place, the greater the chance of uh, degraded performance. And I think that should resonate with everybody sitting in the room, because you've got two clients. You've got your internal customer that you've got to delight every day, but many of you have external customers that are impacted by the technology that you are running. So that brings me to what our purpose is as Red 8 Capital, and it's really to provide Red 8 clients with the most flexible and the most competitive financing offerings in the technology market. And when we do that, we're going to help you ensure that the timing of your financial investments match the benefits that are derived from the technology that you guys acquire. So that's the whole reason, really, that you know, Richard and, and John chose to make the investment in Red 8 capital, and that's the purpose statement that, that laid, I've laid out there. So with that, I think we've got our first polling question. So hopefully everyone's got their, uh, their phones uh, teed up and ready to go. So the first question is, is your firm currently using leasing or financing for your technology acquisitions? That's a good race. All right, so it looks like the, uh, the majority of, of, uh, of you are using leasing or financing. And if you just look across the industry, about 84% of companies out there today 
are leveraging leasing or financing uh, to pay for their technology. In some way, shape, or form, it varies, uh, it varies by the type of solution uh, that, they, uh, that they're looking to acquire. But when you look at it, you say, all right, what are the, what are the ways that we help your organization? Uh, and the ways that we help are really, I boiled this down into the red eight ways that we help your organization. And the first four I've got listed here is one, we're going to help your organization manage cash flow. Uh, and uh, another speaker said yesterday that one of the big concerns they've got is buying a bunch of technology and having that technology sitting there idle doing nothing while it's depreciating on their balance sheet. So we step in and that goes back to that purpose statement around our timing of your IT purchases. The other portion is we offer total solution financing. The beauty of Red A Capital is frankly we're brand agnostic. We'll finance any of your technology needs so we're not really aligned to any one manufacturer or supplier. We're brand agnostic and not only can we finance your hardware, uh, which most people are used to thinking about when you think financing or leasing, but we finance hardware, we finance software, we financed professional services, and we can finance support agreements. So really it's a one-stop one shop to handle any of your IT uh, purchasing needs. We also help your for firm conserve capital. Now this, this was a huge issue uh, back in the financial crisis. And I worked for a big bank for years, and I can tell you that those were scary times. And that's why we've got record cash sitting on balance sheets across America, because I think many CFOs still look at the horizon and they see storm clouds out there. There's a lot of uncertainty going on in the market. No one really is sure uh, what the future looks like, so companies are conserving a tremendous amount of capital and using it for either saving it for an emergency or using it for other strategic, uh, better returning acquisitions. And then lastly, it increases your purchasing power. Uh, I think, you know, I sit on a lot of, uh, lot of calls with, with sales reps, and the number one thing I hear from buyers of technology is we don't have the budget. Um, or, yeah, we need this solution, but we can't afford it right now. So we might put an inferior solution in or something that's really not going to meet your needs because you don't have the budget. Well, what Red 8 Capital will help you do is get the solution that you need uh, by leveraging our forms of capital to get the solutions you, uh, those solutions. So the next four is, uh, this goes back to the, the, uh, the uh, arts comment yesterday around having aged assets. Uh, when you put something on a financing or lease agreement, it absolutely helps you avoid technological obsolescence. Uh, we implement a strategy, a refresh strategy, to ensure that you've got access to state-of-the-art equipment uh, when you need it. So I, I use an analogy. It's when you buy a car, for example, and you own that car, you typically will drive that car till the wheels fall off of it. Um, I think some of the observations in an IT, it's the same. We own the, you know, we own the storage or we own the servers. We're going to run this thing forever. That may not be best for your organization. Technological obsolescence is a huge issue, um, obviously for the efficiency of your organization, but we talked about the degradation of performance as well. For the finance folks in the room, you might uh, appreciate this. It certainly has the ability to improve the financial metrics of your organization uh, through various tax and accounting benefits. Uh, I talked about Insight Financial Services and the capabilities that we have to truly implement an asset and lifecycle management program for your organization. Uh, which is a big issue when managing assets, is what do I do with this stuff that's used uh, or off-lease assets? Uh, we've got the ability to help manage that process for you uh, and take that burden off your organization. We also, through Insight Financial Services, have a leading edge system that allows you to more effectively manage those ass assets with an interactive tool called Amos, and that's our asset management online system, which is a proprietary, and I can tell you the leading online asset management system for, for companies to manage their IT in the industry. I'd be happy to show that to you whenever, whenever you guys would like. And I would say we've got complete flexibility too. Uh, and we've got the ability as an independent finance company, again, who's here to help your, you acquire the solutions you need, we've got total flexibility to structure uh, that solution. And we do that, well, we got a poll question. So the next poll question, if you get your phones ready, is how important is cost as one of the drivers for your consideration of cloud? All right, so most of you, it's very, very important. It was interesting hearing some of the, uh, 
some of the, uh, the discussion around public cloud and how uh, there was a data point that talked about how many are leaving the public cloud because of cost. Uh, the uncertainty of cost was one of the issues driving folks away from public cloud, which candidly I wasn't aware of. So I thought that was quite fascinating. But if you look at the types of offerings that we've got at Red 8 Capital, I mean, really, we've got your traditional leases. We can do your fair market value leases. We can do your capital dollar buyout or fixed purchase option leases. Uh, for the likes of software and support contracts, we can do extended payment term options to help facilitate uh, buying those license agreements. Uh, I mentioned we've got technology refresh programs that we can implement. We'll tailor solutions to meet your specific IT needs as well as your financial objectives of the organization to make sure that you've always got access to the latest, greatest of technology. And then we've also got what everyone loves is, I would say, the very flexible payment options would be things like deferred payments, skip payments, seasonal payments, structuring the cash flows of your te technology acquisition to meet the cash flows of the organization. For example, as we reach the end of the year, many people want to implement technology today because they need it, but they say, I don't have the budget for it. I didn't plan for a security breach. I don't have the budget to implement this, this, uh, this uh, new network security application. Well, we could step in and help you get the solution that you need today, but you make no payments until your next budget cycle, until next year. So that's an example of, uh, of a very common and very popular uh, flexible payment option. And the last one, which Rob started with earlier, is uh, we've formulated what we're, we call internally our capacity on demand capabilities. And uh, you know, I'll refer to those as usage-based billing offerings. And a little bit about capacity on demand. I would call this Red 8's answer to the public cloud. And it gives our clients a unique usage-based billing option, option that allows you to implement a scalable technology solution without the heavy upfront capital investment. So I think what's one of the other common issues you hear is people buy for the future. And uh, I'll refer back to the comment yesterday. I worry that I've got, I've got uh, uh, infrastructure sitting there that's not doing anything for my organization, yet I have to depreciate it. So it's a big concern for organizations. Our capacity on demand product will, uh, in essence, eliminate that uh, concern for you. And really, from your perspective, it allows you to realize the benefits uh, of the public cloud payment model, while also giving you, I'd say, the security and the access and I, based on some of the, the dialogue I've heard the last couple of days, uh, the certainty of payment for your private environment or a hybrid environment. So we have another polling question. So when you look at the polling question, how important is it for your organization to move from CapEx spending model to an OpEx spending model? Tight. Okay. Very good, thank you. So again, with our capacity on demand product, you pay for the compute that you need when you need it. And uh, it makes, there's no need to make significant upfront capital investments for the solutions you need. Uh, on, uh, so you're banking on or placing bets on what your future uh, capacity needs may look like. And what it does, it allows you the additional computing capacity at no additional charges to you. So we'll arm you with the ability to have the extra computing power on your, uh, on your premise, but frankly, you don't pay for it until you light it up and you start using it, which I know many of you are familiar with some of those models that are out there today. The intent of this is to have a totally bundled solution. So it not only includes the hardware, but it also includes maintenance, support, services, everything at one per whatever the measurement system is charged. So for storage, a per gig or per terabyte charge, for example. And this is really a usage agreement. And it, frankly, it allows you to improve your cash flow, because again, you're paying for the solution as you're using it, which, uh, which can strengthen the, the, the argument for off-balance sheet financing, which for many of the finance folks in your organization uh, is pretty attractive for the use of the technology. So since capacity, when you say cloud financing or cloud funding, or you talk about usage-based billing, uh, I'll, I'll use this. It's a very nebulous term. So uh, see what I did there with the cloud analogy? It's a, it's a very nebulous term. Everyone's got a different definition for what cloud is. 
Everyone's got a different definition for what a usage-based billing or capacity model looks like. So what I tried to do is just frame this up into four what I'll call flavors of capacity capabilities. And I will say, because what I didn't want to come here and say is, it depends. But candidly, it does depend. Uh, we've got the flexibility to structure agreement, again, that meets the needs, not only of, for the technology organization with the, in your firm, but also for the finance folks. So we've got a lot of latitude to, 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 uh, to structure those programs that way. But I tried to boil it down into four Four flavors, and, um, and it's pretty simple, and we can tailor solutions off each one of these. But if you look at the first one, I, I call this one the guaranteed minimum. And the guaranteed minimum looks and feels a lot like a lease agreement. It just breaks that down into a per, we'll say, gigabyte charge. And that's based on a fixed term and a fixed monthly commitment that, uh, that you commit to Red 8 Capital. And as you use more of the solution, your per gigabyte charge decreases Anytime you go over the fixed term commitment uh, or the, uh, the fixed minimum uh, utilization agreement. So from, finance from, from, from a finance company's perspective, that's the least riskiest model for us and probably the cheapest solution that's, that's out there uh, for our clients. The next one we call is the buffer capacity. And this is uh, the second flavor I would see. These first two flavors are very common in our industry. So every manufacturer out there that is selling some capacity or something on demand has these two flavors out there. The buffer capacity is, is that we're gonna, put, uh, we're gonna put a terabyte worth of data out on your, on your facility, uh, but we know you're only using seven gigabytes, 700 gigabytes today, so you only have to pay for the 700 gigabytes, and when you use 800 gigabytes, we're gonna light that up and we're gonna start billing you for eight. And when you use nine, we're gonna bill you for nine. Under those models, once you light them up, you stay there. So it's like, a, it's like a step lease. So you light them up, and that becomes your new minimum commitment. It's a very common, it's been a very popular utilization tool for the last several years, and that's certainly something that Ready Capital can provide. Um, where we start getting into showing our flexibility and our uniqueness and how we want to help you get deals done, I would look at the next two flavors. And that would be what I call flex on demand. So, Richard, one thing, we probably have to have the marketing folks work on some of the naming here. <laughs> Richard's squirming, like, ah. Oh. Uh, so, flex on demand. So, what flex on demand looks like is it's very similar to the buffer. So, you've got the increased capacity on your premise. Uh, when you light up that capacity, we'll turn it on and we're going to bill you for it. But as your needs come back down to normalized levers, levels, we're going to charge you back at your normalized levels. So, it allows you to burst up and use what you need when you need it but we're not gonna lock you into that fixed commitment. We've got the flexibility to come back down and normalize your payment stream, uh, which has been a very popular, uh, popular flavor, what I'll call it. And the last one I would call is the true utility-based model. And the true utility-based model is, I think, what most folks equate the public cloud payment model to look like. And that truly is that you're paying for the compute that you use, so as you use it. And that's a solution that Red 8 Capital is willing to do to support Red 8 clients. And a, uh, so, you know, we, we just trust that our system engineers, in conjunction with our clients, will have a very good understanding of what the specific application needs look like and what the future looks like, and we're going to support you in putting together those types of agreements. So I wanted to package those into four flavors for you. Um, so just to give everybody a sense of the type of uh, offerings that we've got under the capacity model. Again, this is a starter point. Um, one of the things I would do is encourage that if you're interested in this stuff, let's grab your client executive and let's have dialogue. Because that's the way we're going to figure out what makes both sense, not only for your technology needs, but for your financial budgets as well, too. So I asked to put an Uber slide in here. <laughs> because I didn't want to be the only guy that didn't have Uber in here. So I just put an Uber slide in there. But I, as I was driving in today, I said, God, I hope Joanne put that Uber slide in there. I, you know, I wanted to get a little laugh. But you actually do think of Uber, and I can't equate it to a usage-based billing model. Very similar. I mean, you're not buying the car. You're not leasing the car. You're just paying for the car when you need it. It's on demand. I mean, that's what Uber is. It's the same thing we're talking about from a technology perspective at Red 8 Capital. So I felt, you know, it was, it was a joke, but actually it is quite, uh, it is quite relevant. So let me just leave you with, with a few final thoughts with respect to, to Red 8 Capital and how we can help. Again, we, our goal is to help you effectively manage your tech refresh strategy. 
So our goal is to not only help you get the technology that you need today, that your organization needs today, but put in a program that's going to help you manage your technology needs for the future. And one of the ways that we do that is through our capacity on demand programs. And our capacity on demand programs provide your organization with the payment flexibility of the public cloud while giving you that certainty, that security, and that access and service levels of a private environment. And I'm gonna leave you one more thing. I, I mentioned that uh, any of these capacity models, we've had a lot of dialogue with clients that are very interested in our breadth of capabilities under capacity. I would just encourage you, if you're interested in learning anything more about how we can help you from a capacity standpoint, or a, a usage-based billing perspective, or any of your other financing needs, I just encourage you to reach out, and let's get the conversation started. So with that, that's all I'm prepared to cover today. If anyone's got any questions, I guess, Eric, I turn it yeah, we'll back see. over to you. Scott Sullivan, everybody, come on. <laughs> all right. So uh, could we bring the mic up a little bit? It seems a little soft, thank you. Uh, oh, wow, they're up quick. I'm sorry, we'll get this one first. Go ahead. So Scott, just a, a question around um, where, the, the, where the capabilities are now for outside of storage to looking at other things. So actually starting to do an on-demand model for compute and slicing up VMs and those kind of things. Uh, obviously, I don't know if we're there now, but is that kind of the direction or could we do that now? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, uh, it goes back, I, I made the comment that we, we're going to rely heavily on you guys and the system engineers to help us with that. Um, I, I'll boil this down to, uh, I'll oversimplify this, but I would say as long as we've got the ability to measure usage, we've got the ability to bill for it. You know, the fee, the pay for, per fee model. So uh, I'm not intimately familiar with all the intricacies of all the technology, that's why I need the, the engineers to help. Uh, talk about what current utilization looks like. What are some of the dependent variables that impact utilization in the in the future with some of the software tools that are that our our, our partners sell, and um, and we build the case. We build the case for it. So absolutely, I mean networking, uh, storage, um, any of the any of the various compute models that we can measure, uh, we're going to take a run at it. We're going to take a run at it. So it's not limited to just storage. Storage is the most intuitive and the easiest to do today, but you know, you start looking at converged infrastructure, um, a lot of interest in building utilization models around that. Scott, good presentation. Um, so on the list up there, it showed people that were interested in learning, they were just looking at financing or they weren't at all. Is there a certain program or entry point that you would typically suggest to those people? Is this is a way to start looking at potentially financing or capacity on demand? So you mentioned an entry point. Are you referring, Dana, to the, to the flavors of the capacity? Yes. Uh, it, it depends. Okay. It, it, it really depends. If, uh, if you're looking, it really depends on what the financial objectives are of the organization. Uh, you know, there are ways that you can structure it where your cost per fee is lower, uh, and what you sign up for is more of a guaranteed commitment that you're going to make the payment at that fee. Uh, if you want a program that's going to provide a heck of a lot more flexibility, then there's a cost associated with that. So uh, there isn't really any entry point per se. I think it really is. We can be nimble enough to structure the solution based on really what the financial objectives are of the organization. It's really marrying the, finan marrying the financial objectives uh, with the technology objectives. That's kind of our role is to make sure that we're making that happen. Scott, one of the, I think the last point you put up there was, um, and I, if you can go back to that slide, I think it was uh, point number four. You know, if you look at, uh, I don't know if you can get back to oh, it. But not, let me get back. You, if you look in the, like the SaaS model, right, or, you know, most of your traditional cloud companies um, today. If it was your last slide. Yeah, the, so that, you know, the traditional SaaS model, you agree up front that you're going to pay a monthly subscription fee based on X number of users. And typically, there isn't the flexibility to reduce, right? right? Typically, let's say you agree that we're going to spend uh, $100,000 a month for 12 months over a three-year contract. That's the minimum, and you're not going to be able to reduce that number. Are you saying that, for instance, with storage, if a customer agrees that, you know, okay, month one, we may only use a terabyte, we're going to bill you for a terabyte. But month two, they only use 200 gig. We're only going to bill them for the 200 gig. 
Is that the flexibility under, under we the have? under the true usage based building yeah. model? That's the concept. That's <coughs> and and that and that's what's key, you know. And, and I'll say in the spirit of candor here, that's why um, I've referred to our engineers several times. You know, we we uh, we're not going to go willy nilly into these transactions without having a high level of certainty that we've got our arms around what current utilization looks like. We understand the, uh, the peaks and the valleys of that utilization. We understand what the future state looks like, and we build the model around that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly the concept. You know, those last two, really, there's no one in the market that's doing that, and that's, and that's what we want to be. That's exactly what we want to be. Scott, we, we talk to people quite often that say, we don't lease, mm -hmm. or they have a negative connotation with the term lease. And I'll tee you up a little bit for this one because we had someone tell you and I on a phone call two days ago that they don't lease, but then they asked us for net 500 terms on the deal. Right. Um, <laughs> so for those of us not only within Red 8, but for our customers and partners that are here working internally within their own organizations, what are we, what, what's the question that we should be asking when someone says we don't lease? Because obviously we've got four constructs and many variations within those four constructs. So what's your response to I don't lease? Yeah, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a tough one because you, you do get that quite a bit. I think it's uh, the simple question is to turn it back on them and ask them, how do you, make, how do you pay for your technology strategies? How do, you how do you pay for it today? And it's interesting is when you get involved with the finance organization, they may not typically think they lease from vendors, but oftentimes the finance organization has third party financing relationships set up with banks or with independent lessors where they're absolutely leasing it through them. Or they're getting some alternative form of financing to pay for it. Uh, I, I mentioned early on, 84% of companies out there are financing or leasing their IT acquisitions. Uh, you know, it's funny, you can sit and de debate them all day long, but I guess it's just to try to get a better understanding, well, how do you pay how do you pay for your technology solutions today? And, and have that dialogue. And uh, oftentimes is the case, like the example we had recently, they're looking for some form of extended payment term, which is financing, is financing. But at least, you know, for, you know, again, for the folks in this room, in that same survey I mentioned up there with IDC, that SAP sponsored, where they said 92% of people are looking, or the decisions maker involved finance, what was funny is, in that same survey, IDC came back and said, but don't say the word lease, and don't say the word finance to technology folks. <laughs> they said, that's why you heard me say many times extended payment options. Because leasing does have a bad connotation oftentimes. Even though for technology, in my perspective, it is the best way to acquire a technology solution. I'll use Art's example. 80% of his time he spends worrying about old technology. So, Buying, old tech, buying technology and holding on for it for years isn't doing your organization any good. So, um, but I, it's, tough, it's tough to manage that. It's just to get a better understanding of, of what strategy they're using today to acquire their technology and start the dialogue there. All right, is there any other questions? For any more for Scott? Scott, what's the best oh. way to get a hold of you? The, uh, well, I don't have my, you can grab my card. Your client executive can absolutely get in touch with me, or you can just go ssullivan at red8.com. Thank you. Or Thank corner you. them on the golf course. Scott yeah. Sullivan, everybody. Give Thank Scott you. a great big hand.